Oh, yes! <laughs> oh. I need to spend more time, I say this every every time I do one of these videos, I need to spend more time doing dirt racing in the sim. What's up guys, Hobo88 here and welcome back to iRacing. It is build week and that means new content and in the 2023 season one build, we have got a new track for us to check out here on the dirt and that is this. Lincoln Speedway, um, this is a really cool track and I'm really looking forward to this video actually because I've got a feeling that this could be one of those tracks on iRacing that I really like. We're about to find out. Uh, but basically in this video, I'm gonna go through like I always do and uh, preview the track. I'm gonna go through and drive all the different dirt cars on the iRacing service around here, do a few laps and we'll have a bit of a look at them all, see how they all stack up and compare. We'll also give you my impressions and my thoughts about the track itself and uh, we'll check out all the different track states and all that sort of stuff. Have a bit of a look around the complex and see what it's all about. But uh, if you guys are new to this, it's your first time watching one of these videos of mine, in the description below you'll find timestamps to each of the individual cars if you want to go and skip ahead to just a specific car. Um, but otherwise, we're just going to work our way through from the, basically the slowest to the fastest and work our way up through the different cars, kicking things off here with the Dirt Legend, which is where we're going to start. So without any further ado, let's go out and check out the track in the Legend, see what it's all about. All right, so Dirt Legend, I uh, <laughs> I kind of didn't think this through, guys. I uh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and um, remap all my controls for all these cars as I go because I haven't driven any of them before with the new setup. So uh, we'll see how we go. But um, this is Lincoln Speedway, a three eighth mile clay high bank dirt track. Uh, in it's in Abbottstown, Pennsylvania. Um, and that's basically the info about the track. That's all we need to know. I'm just going to go ahead and have a drive around here in the infield area, which is where the pits are located on this particular track. So we've got, it looks like we've got like Victory Lane here straight away off to the side. And I'm going to turn around. The Lucky we're in the Legend, a nice little car. We've got the ability to move around tight spaces pretty easily. Um, looks like the pit area just goes straight from the back stretch on the exit of turn two and scoots across here to the uh, middle of the front stretch, I'm thinking this might be. Um, but we've got infield complex, a um, few sheds and bits and pieces. Uh, let's get this here. Um, yeah, a few in infield uh, Buildings and bits and pieces, an ice machine, very important. A couple of portal all the all the important stuff. I'm actually going to see whether or not I can drive around. We'll see if we fall off the edge of the map or anything here, but let's see if I can drive around the inside of the fence. Looks like I can. So that's cool. And how's how's the old uh, wooden? There's a grate there on the ground. How's the old wooden fence on the inside here of the uh, the guard railing? That's pretty cool. But uh, I don't have look around buttons mapped. Um, but there is, interestingly, there is some light towers here that are set up as trailers. Um, but I have noticed that it does specify that there is no night lighting for this track. There, we ran into that problem at, uh, at Link, um, Lucas Oil, I think it was as well, where I tried to load into a night session and couldn't. Um, so that's interesting. There is, looks like... Uh, Looks like there is temp lighting at this track, but it obviously isn't set up to work uh, in the sim, I'm assuming anyway, so you can't load into a night session. Or if, if you do, there'll be no lights. Um, so I've got a cool little infield, I'm guessing spectator area. I can't remember from what I've watched of races here before, but I'm assuming this is just an infield spectator area or maybe for crews, pit crews and things like that. Uh, this is interesting. We've got... a tunnel by the look of it yeah oh look who's in the tunnel steve myers and dale jr we found them exit the parking lot and the front stretch so there you go you can go underneath the track there to head out into the out field spectator areas so that's really cool i like the level of detail and this is uh the other side of this complex in the infield and what I want to do real quick is just head out and have a look and see what the uh, 
backstretch looks like because at this track, I believe you can head... Uh, well, the main pit area, I believe, is off the backstretch on the exit of turn two. Um, so we'll go. Pit box team, right here. Thanks, crew chief. Need to turn him off. We'll just go out here on track real quick. And see whether or not we can get out into the outfield pit area as well. So I think that the... Uh, normally the cars would head off here. And as expected, it is blocked off. Uh, so this would be your conventional outfield pit area on the backstretch. Cars normally enter the track on the entry to turn number three. We can't really see a lot out there over the fence. Um... But there is a, you can see up here at the end of the backstretch, there is a entry point where cars would normally come onto the track, just there, and it's all blocked off as well. So that's a look at the track. We'll go do a few laps now. We are just running on the baseline setup for iRacing for this car, as we always do. 0% track state. It is the morning as far as the time of day is concerned. Let's do a few laps. First time doing any dirt on this new wheel and pedals as well, guys. So we've got that to contend with here as well. But. 20 .2. I think we'll be able to adjust fairly quickly to that. Let's rip a few laps. So straight away, I'm excited. And the reason why I'm excited is because this is, I think, going to be one of those tracks on the service that fits the bill for me on what we don't have a lot of in iRacing, or it feels like we don't have a lot of. And that's where I feel like the tracks don't have enough character. They're, I shouldn't say they're too easy, and not all of them are. There's certainly variety, but a lot of the tracks are just, you hammer the top or you hammer the bottom, or you just, they're... Same at both ends, pretty conventional, but this track has got a lot of character to it, and um, you can sort of see the banking's a bit all over the place. It's it's high banked in spots. It's it flattens out a little bit here on the exit of turn two, and then it comes back up again. The corners are not conventional shapes. Um, you know, this one's three and four down here. It's really tight in the middle. But then it opens right up on the exit. Turn one is really tight on the entry, and then it opens up. Tightens and opens. It's a it, the the corners are almost a little unusual. I get I, it's the the one I probably liken it to the most in that respect in terms of the other tracks that we have on iRacing, racing is probably Weed Sport just because it's a weird shape. Um, and I like that. I like the fact that it's a the technical track. You know, like. What I like about it, and what I'm hoping will be the case, is that you'll end up having the ability to run different lines. You'll be able to have multi-groove racing, where maybe running the high line is good, or you might be able to run the middle or the bottom, or mix it up a bit. Whereas I feel like iRacing Dirt, the problem with iRacing Dirt that I have more than anything else is that there's one good line normally. Um, it's not always the case. When the tracks blow right off and they get slick, you end up being able to run a few different lines, but... I'm hoping that this is one of those tracks where because it's a bit of an unusual shape and the characteristics of the track are a little unusual, it makes it more technical and it means that you can move around a bit and try some different lines. Remains to be seen, and you guys know I don't get the chance to actually race a lot of dirt on iRacing these days, but I'm hoping that this is what this track can offer. And as is the case uh, a lot of the time, the Little Dirt Legend is a lot of fun. This is good. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying cutting some laps and I actually think, like many of the tracks, the Dirt Legend could actually provide some pretty good racing, but it's not something that ever gets used, hardly ever. I'd love to do a Little Legend series one day or something. That would be good fun. Because I think that they're pretty, pretty enjoyable little cars, these. We kind of run a few different lines there. I think that that's probably going to be enough here. It's a pretty long intro to the video here because we drove around and had a look for a long time around the complex. That's enough laps and the legend will 
rip a few laps of the replay for you guys to take a look at there. But uh, I've uh, so far, I have to say, I'm enjoying it. I think it's going to be good. Um, I missed the pit entry there on the exit of the back off, off onto the back straight. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see how all, all the different cars stack up here and how they all go. So. Uh, that's it for the little legend. We'll come back next and try out the street stock. A bit bigger, a bit heavier, and uh, see how that goes. But um, I'm looking forward to it. This should be good fun. Here we go. All right, you guys, here we go. Dirt Street Stock. This will be good. Um, I moved the time of day to noon, so we're now the middle of the day. And I moved the track state up to 20%. So we'll get out here and uh, see how this goes. I am using the Lincoln setup that iRacing provides for the car. Let's get out here and do a few laps and see what it's like. So interesting at 20% track state, there is definitely a, a very pronounced line and it looks like the top is going to be the, uh, oh, that's close to the wall. Looks like the top is going to be the preferred line as the track wears through this sort of track state level. But we're going to go ahead and try and uh, hit the bottom here in a minute as well. Get that tear off. The street stocks are a funny car. I have... Uh, not a great lot of opinion on them as far as um, when I drive them. I, I really enjoy doing laps in this car, but I get very demotivated about the idea of racing them because I've, every time I've driven the dirt street stock in a race, they're all just so even. It's so hard to pass. But I, I do enjoy getting the chance to come out and do laps in them for these videos, these preview videos, because they're a fun car to drive, but... Well, there's a bit of a bonk on the fence. Just trying to run some of the lower lines, which seem fairly feasible, to be honest. I still, I'm still convinced that you might be able to get more than one groove going at this track. Of course, some cars are better suited to that than others. Like I was just saying, the street stock, typically, f from my experience, is not a car that you get multi-groove racing in. Stretch wall kind of just just sort of curves in just a little bit. That's twice now that I've just rubbed along it. It's a little deceptive. It's not dead straight, I guess. It doesn't really curve, but it just juts out a little bit. That was pretty nice through there. The street stock is also one of those cars that's not that dependent on uh, staying out of the slick, you know, like you can sort of drive through the middle. 
in these cars pretty well. Yeah, that's good fun. The car really flights down into turn one. There's like, um, it feels like the, uh, the track kind of raises up and then it like drops down into the, into the corner as you get to the banking right there. But uh, I like it. That's good fun. The uh, hit exit is much closer to the exit of two than I was thinking. But uh, that's the street stop, guys. I'll go ahead and um, run a couple laps of replay of this, and then next we're going to check out the UMP modified. All right, this is where these videos always tend to get fun because uh, now we're in the UMP modified and it's time to get into the cars that are a little bit quicker and you actually really have to drive. So this is where we start to see what the track characteristics are actually like. I've moved to the afternoon now. The sun's right up in the middle of the sky. It's getting bright and sunny. And uh, the track state up to 50% as well. So we should uh, have to work it a little bit here in the, in the slick. And as is always the case, it takes me a couple of laps to remember how to drive again. <laughs> Let's see how we go here. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. I need to spend more time. I say this every, every time I do one of these videos. I need to spend more time doing dirt racing in the sim. That moment where I just drove up out of turn two right up against the boards. It's just this complete satisfaction. <laughs> ah, now look at that. That felt pretty decent, although we didn't get a very good drive off the corner. It's a long way around there on the exit of turn two. That Seems a little bit uh, more feasible though. The low line in three and four, much shorter route around the bottom on the exit of four. Turn two, just ripping around the top feels right. Turn three and four, the bottom. Not bad. Of course, I'm not running a Delta, so I've got no idea what lap times I'm doing. So you'd sort of have to go and uh, test the different lines and see what, what is actually faster. Because a lot of the time, what feels quicker isn't necessarily. But it does seem like there'd be potential here to run a couple of grooves. That high line through turn two, though, that's that's fun. <laughs> Yeah, see, that was pretty good. If you can roll all the way around the bottom and keep it tight. Oh, bit too much throttle there.
Oh, I thought I was going to get the wall there. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on to it. I do tend to drive this car way too sideways. I am well aware of that. Ah, oh, it's so much fun, you guys. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so good. All right. Let's check out the replay here and uh, watch a couple of those laps back. I could just keep driving around and around and around and around. <laughs> but we have to move on. We're going to move on to the midget next, which will always be good fun as well. What I am, I'm genuinely interested, though, about what line is fast around here. So what I will do is the very first lap of the replay that I show you next of this UMP modified will be the fastest lap that we just did. So to give you an idea of the line that was the quickest in that little session, I'll show you the fastest lap first here on the replay. Let's go out and see how the midget goes around here. This will be good. Um, I know you guys get frustrated by my seating position with my FOV in this car. Apologies about that, but it is what it is. And uh, we are still in the afternoon. I've bumped the track state right up to 75% now, so much slicker. And um, I mean, let's just see what happens. We're on the Lincoln setup that iRacing provide. And let's hope that we don't bin it. Here we go. The midgets are always uh, one of these cars that I just I fall in love with every time I do these videos. Same with the UMP modifieds. It's always those two. I go out and do some laps and just love it. And here we go again. This is already great fun. Oh, that's too deep. Oh, no, we got away with it. Oh, I thought we were dead there. Oh, we are that time. Oh, no, don't tip over. Don't tip over. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. We'll do the classic. Uh... Oh, no, we can't reverse. Apparently, I couldn't sleep reverse, but that's all right. We got away with it. Oh, wow. Well. So we didn't even get to the wingless sprint car in this video before we had a big moment. 
Normally it's the wingless sprint car the way we have that happen. Not the midget. But that was that was a little overcommitted down there into turn three. After we got away with it in turn one. My bravery levels went through the roof. But my ability levels did not. <laughs> That's a little bit nicer down there. There we go. Maybe not quite so ambitious. Oh, it feels like we're going way too fast down into turn one, but there's just, there is a lot more banking than, uh, than it feels like going down into there. The car just sticks. Just sort of work our way around a little here. Just a couple of slider, slider lines to get a feel for the car. Get a little bit more familiar with just how much grip there is, that side grip. And then we'll try and work our way onto the bottom. Um, how interesting was it that the bottom was the fast way around in the UMP modified. Even that lap, that was the quickest lap, I completely botched the exit of turn four. Like, car was out of control sideways, very slow, and it was still the fastest lap of that session on the bottom. So, looks like this low line might be good around here. It is a much shorter and direct way around the track, especially on the exits of the corners. So, it makes some sense. And you do see cars running around the bottom here in real life when you watch racing here. You get a few people ripping the top and then others. And I'd say the prevailing line around here in sprint car racing that I've watched anyway, seems to be this sort of hug the inside fence and drive straight off the corner line. That seems to be quite popular around here. So it's good to see a bit of that replicated in the sim. Seems to be the same. Man, these midgets are so fun. <laughs> Once again, you just think that there's no way. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we've had a monumental. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I was just about to say, as soon as you think that you uh, are gone, you're not. We caught the outside wall there on the back stretch and just tipped us over there. But uh, that's the midget. Let's go take a look at uh, the replay there, a few laps of that. That was so much fun. Um, the one that always worries me the most is coming up next, and that is the wingless sprint car. So strap yourselves in, guys. That's going to be good fun, and that's coming up next. All right, so <laughs> given that uh, we did not make it around here in the midget without having a monumental accident, gives me very little hope of being able to get around here in the wingless sprint car without a monumental accident. So this is a 360 wingless. Um, I've left the track state the same, so we're still at, uh, I think it was 75%. But uh, time of day, we're a little later, late afternoon, sun's starting to set. This is usually my favorite time of day. Oh no! My favorite time of day in the sim on the dirt because I think it looks the best. 
Um, right, let's try and not do that again, shall we? <laughs> that was better. This is the car that I always get worried about, that I'm going to have a massive accident in. I think I've got it figured out now, though. I think I've got it figured out. And this is only the 360 variety. Starting to build up a little bit of confidence, though. <laughs> Once you get the hang of it, though, it is good fun. It's an eye-opener. When you first go into the corner and the thing doesn't rotate, and you're going a million miles an hour at the fence. We got away with that one there in the uh, first lap. Oh, that was beautiful there. Look at that. Oh, let her rip. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we're good. That was a nice lap in the end. If it scares you just a little, then you're probably going all right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That one scared me a lot. Oh, we were just chasing it for eternity there in that three and four. It is a tricky car to run the bottom in. I will say that it gets very tight when you're off throttle. Oh, whoa, we've got the inside wall. That would have been perfect if we had to just missed it, but. Let's we'll see if we can run at least a lap around the bottom without doing something stupid. There we go. Again, I'm genuinely interested about whether or not the top or the bottom are qui is quicker, though. I think the bottom is deceptively good, but if you can absolutely rail the top, it's probably going to be quick as well. So I'm still optimistic that you're going to see multi-groove racing around here. I'm going to cut my losses, though, in this car before I do something that I'm just have another massive moment. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, though. I uh, actually really enjoyed that car, or this car around here, to be honest. That was really good. Um... Next, we're going to bump the track state all the way up to 100% and check out the big blocks. So I'm looking forward to that to see how they go. But uh, yeah, that was that was fun. The wingless sprint car, it's a win. Good fun around here. So uh, we're back for the big, big blocks next. Now, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, big blocks. I still think these cars are sensational. We've bumped the track state all the way up to 100%. We are at sunset the time of day. This is as late as we can go, I think, because uh, without any night lights, uh, track lighting, it's going to be just dark if we go any later than this. So let's see 
A hundred percent track state, so this is as worn as it's going to get on a uh, i racing generated track state, anyway. I just love these cars. I do get a little bit of a weed sport vibe out of turns one and two when you run the bottom. The corner just seems to go forever. The exit of turn two. And it opens right up. They're such a unique car to drive too. You gotta drive them very differently to anything else. And of course, whenever I do these videos, oh, it's usually straight from the wingless sprint car, which are about as different as you could get as far as driver technique goes. That's just, just into the wall there. I've been getting a little closer to it each time. I mean, you can see the tire marks right up against the fence. Just jumped over the top there on that last lap. But even though that's, you know, you look at how close the right rear is to the wall up there. It is quite comfortable to run up there. Doesn't feel that perilous like it often does when you get that close at other tracks. But I think in this car particularly, the low line will be much stronger. These cars are just more designed for that type of driving too. Off the throttle, just rolling around nice and straight. Which is probably why I'm better at driving these than most other cars, because you don't have to be brave <laughs> and run around the fence. That big backfire on the corner entry. I love it. off the wall when the track states like this it is pretty hard to get into the corners on the top like you really got to try and drive it but the, the entry to the corners is very wide you're turning right up the hill on the corner entry to get up above the slick that was too much like it's a long way around if that makes sense you got to go out of your way to steer up to the right hand side and, and get above the slick making the track a lot longer around there than if you were to just turn in down onto the bottom like that so I think I think for sure in some cars the bottom is going to be much much better when the track gets really slick like this assuming that the bottom stays juiced up a little bit
took my eyes off the screen for one second. Um, great fun. I actually wouldn't mind doing a race around here in these, or even the 358 modifieds. I think they'd be good too. Um, not the sort of track you'd probably associate with these types of cars, but uh, I think the racing here could be good with them. Um, that is it for the big block. Let's go ahead and do a NASCAR next. We'll hit the Camping World truck uh, and see how that goes around here. You guys love it when I get out the NASCARs on these videos. So Camping World truck coming right up. Okay, so, truck. <laughs> I've moved back to the middle of the day, I think it's noon, and 25% track state with the Eldora set up on, because as we know, we need to have a dirt set up, and that's as close as we can get, so. Um, I love the truck on dirt. I do not know how it's gonna go around this track though, so let's have a go. Let's see what it's like. These are always very difficult to get up to speed initially because they're so tricky to drive on dirt. Usually take a few laps to find that rhythm. So let's see how we go here. Feels pretty good straight away, although then I say that I make a mistake. The old uh, iRacing clutch in. There we go. That was better. That was better. I mentioned uh, earlier in this video, if you were watching it, that the, the little dirt legend, I'd love to do like a legends, a fixed legend series or something. Be really good fun to race. These cars or these trucks, a fixed dirt truck series would be insanely fun. I love these things on the dirt. And I could, I could try and tell you that I'm picking and choosing specific lines here, but the reality is, is that you just go wherever it takes you. <laughs> Probably don't quite have the gearing right for this track. A little low in the revs here in fourth gear, but... Ridiculous. <laughs> and should this be in this video, like a full preview of all the dirt cars on a dirt track? So should this belong? I don't know. You can make that argument one way or another, but you guys crack it when I don't put the NASCARs on the dirt for these videos. So here we are again. <laughs> I think that there should be more dirt racing in these in real life. I think it's great. But a lot of the purists, well, a lot of the purists think that there should be more dirt racing in NASCAR. But there's a lot of people out there that don't think that dirt has a place in NASCAR. Hey, there we go, that was pretty nice. Again though, we're just the RPM range isn't quite right for the the mid corner and what happens is you end up not having enough wheel spin the 
truck ends up sort of over rotating awkwardly on the corner exit. If you're not really on top of it. Again, there it is right there. I just cannot stop it from doing that on the exit of four. Need to make some adjustments on the setup, I think, to make it run a little better. But you get the idea. I actually think that's great fun. Um, and like I said, I'd love to do uh, I'd love to do a truck series on dirt. As far as this track goes, probably not that well suited to these uh, compared to some of the others out there. But I still think great fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. But we're going to come back and do another one that isn't really a dirt car on the service. And that's the Pro 2 trucks. You guys like to see them as well. So let's bring them out next. All right, here we go. Pro 2 truck. I love these. These are some of my favorite uh, things to drive on the sim. They don't always go that well on uh, on the dirt ovals, but uh, we'll see how we go here. The old Pro 2 truck. actually didn't change the uh, setup that we've got on this. That's whatever we ran in the last uh, the last video, which was the Lucas Oil preview video. Um, I did have to reconfigure all my controls again. For every car so far, we've had to reconfigure the controls. But uh, I forgot to change the setup on this one. So whatever we ran last time, it should be the same here. It should work fine. Gearing is just okay. We're almost running out by the end of the straight, but. Oh, we're tight. Definitely understeer city trying to get down to the bottom. There you go, you gotta really get it in the corner. Get to rotate and then we're good. These trucks are just great fun to drive. That's doesn't matter what you're driving them on. Oh, we're up on the fence. <laughs> we put the rear quarter panels on top of the fence, I think, there. It worked. Oh, just a little bit too much. Yeah, look at that. You can see the tire tracks where the wheels went right up against the wall. Oh, oh, oh. Are we stuck? I think we're going to be. Come on, get off there. Oh dear. I think that might be us done. We're hooked on the fence. Well, that was short-lived, wasn't it? We're stuck. <laughs> I haven't done that before. First for everything. 
I think we've seen enough, though, haven't we? That's the Pro 2 trucks. I mean, they, they work, and um, they're not exactly a, a dirt oval car, but um, they are good on the dirt ovals. Let's, let's just put it like that. Um, another one of those ones, those unique, weird little series I'd love to do, like a Pro Truck series on the ovals would be good. But um, I think that that's probably enough for that. Let's move on to the ones that everyone really wants to see next. We've got the super late models and then the sprint cars, wing sprint cars. So super late models next. Um, I'm looking forward to them around here big time. So uh, we'll have a look at a couple of laps of the replay there from the pro truck and then move on to those next. So I went out on track and didn't realize I wasn't recording. So we've gone back to the pits. We're going to go out again. But um, of all the cars that I'm going to go through or that I have gone through so far and are going through in this video, I think that the super late model is possibly the one that I've been looking forward to the most because I love these cars. They're so much fun to drive. They're just brutal, brutal cars. And uh, I love them. Don't get to race them hardly ever. And uh, I just enjoy doing laps in them. And I think um, what I've, my expectation for this track with it being a little bit different and unique, I feel like these will be cars that you can really drive around here. And I'm really keen to see how they go. I've only done a couple of quick laps before I realized I wasn't recording. So didn't miss anything much. As you can see, because I've still got no idea how to drive them yet. I just love... <laughs> I love the feeling that you get right here, there. As you're coming up off the corner, you put your foot in it, and the front of the car just pitches up in the air. tough. <laughs> I like it. Just starting to get a bit of a feel for the car now. This is always the way I, I get into these things and I come out and thunderfoot around and then after a few laps I start to get a bit of a feel for it and you can finesse the throttle a bit. You don't drive them quite so hard and they go faster, you know. Whoa. I think that being the sort of car that they are, because they are very big, and I often find that running around the top is difficult in these because of how big they are and your proximity to the wall. I feel like they'll run really well around the bottom, not so much around the top. But I'm liable to be wrong. I don't get to drive a lot these days in iRacing on the dirt. And uh, even less get to race people where you really learn how to drive. 
And then even less again in these particular cars. Late models are just not a thing that people drive here in Australia on the sim very much. So we don't really get much racing in this type of car here in my time zone. As fun as they are to drive, we do not see much late model racing. We do have late models in Australia. For those of you that might be wondering, but they're not particularly popular here. Not like they are in America. But I've got a, I've got an affinity with these cars. Quick history lesson for you guys in the, my childhood and my background was around what we call super sedans here in Australia. But these days, super sedans and late models are pretty much the same thing. And uh, I grew up watching these types of cars. So I, I love them. I love driving them. And I could just do laps like this all day and enjoy myself. I have to say, I mean, to make this all relevant again and circle back around to this video, they feel really fun to drive on this track. I, 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 have, I haven't got to the full impressions yet of the track, but I, just the fact that it's got character to it, you know, like it's not a cookie cutter track. It, one and two are both turns one and two and turn three and four are very different to each other. The characteristics of the track are very different to pretty much anything else. Multi-line, multi-groove, high line, low line. You can move around. It's not boring, you know, like That's what I like about it. And these cars just good fun we have been going for a few minutes probably longer than we should have with this car and like I said I'll just do laps because it's fun but uh, I think we'll wrap it up there and um, we'll have a look at the replay we'll look at a few laps there and then move on to the wing sprint car 410 sprint cars the big daddy world of outlaws sprint cars uh, and check them out next Okay, here we go, 410 Sprint Car. Just with the uh, iRacing setup on. I moved the track state right back to 10%, I think it was. Just a run in the middle of the day, somewhere in the afternoon, time of day, but um, low track state so we can go out here and absolutely rip. It should be good. I love the sense of speed that you get out of the 410 Sprint Car in these videos, especially when you go from the super late models. So here we go. Let's wind her up, see what we can do. Oh yeah, it's just fast, isn't it? close to the fence.
That's too fast. Too far. It is really weird though, like I just... Whoop, 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 hang on to it. I really don't have in my mind a definitive idea of what the faster line is without seeing the lap times that I'm doing because I've got all that turned off. I don't know what's faster here. Like, is it faster to go up and run around the top or is it quicker to go low and uh, run around the bottom? I, it's really hard for me to tell. I feel like that low line is good, but, oh, but when you get that momentum up on the top, it's hard to say. It's very hard for me to know one way or another here. What I will do at the end of this is uh, start the replay laps again with the fastest lap in this car. So you guys can see what one of these was the quickest. Oh, wow. It is not very often that I crash in the sprint car either. So it's not easy. I think we got away without damaging it too bad there, surprisingly. But yeah, they, normally the sprint cars just lock down and you hold it wide open at a lot of the tracks and it just goes. Can't do that here. You got to drive it. And I like that. I like it. It's more difficult. We've actually hit a lot of things in a lot of the different cars so far in this video. So I think uh, it is a much more difficult dra track than most from a driving perspective. There you go as we go into the wall again i'm gonna go ahead and uh, roll to the replay guys and i'll quickly chat to you and talk over the top of that with uh, some of my thoughts about it all and uh and then that will be it for the video so let's have a look at the replay let's have a look at what was the fastest lap there from that run all right you guys so we're about to roll around here and um watch the fastest lap from that session let's have a look and see what line it was the top in one and two just bonked the fence there on the exit. And yeah, middle high line in three and four as well. So the higher side was quicker there in that session than the bottom. So we run the bottom on the next lap. I don't know where the crash happened, the big crash. It was somewhere around about here. So we're about to see it in a minute, I think. Not that one. There was another one <laughs> that was worse. Um, all right. So let's just quickly talk about this while uh, you watch me wobbling around in the background. But... Um, the, I have to say, the track itself, it's every bit of what I expected it to be. It's not just the conventional, easy to run track. It's different, it's unique, it's got character, which is what I was expecting when I came into this from what I've seen from racing here um, before, like watching videos and things like that. It just doesn't seem like a standard racetrack. Like it's it's got character to it and there are multiple grooves and things like that. And that all seems to be true. That feels right, feels accurate, feels feels realistic to me and I like it because it's not it's not basic and I think that gives variety and will hopefully give a little bit of variety to the racing here as well so um, I guess that remains to be seen I don't get to race a lot like I've said in this video and like you guys know so 
my opinion on that is perhaps not as relevant as some other people, but um, I'm hoping that it means that we'll get to see some good racing here. And uh, I'm, you know, from what I can tell and what my experience is, I think that the racing here will be good because of that. As there we go, there's our shunt. There it is. Oh, it's a shunt. <laughs> we did bend the uh, right front corner in pretty hard with that. I didn't realize uh, quite how hard we hit the right front with that one. But uh, anyway, all in all, I'm impressed. I think it's really good. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback from you guys, particularly those that have been to this track in real life, be it as a driver or even just someone who's familiar with the place and the complex. Let me know what you think. Is it accurate to the real world? We know it will be because it's laser scan, but... Uh, let me know what your thoughts about it. I'd uh, be keen to hear from you guys, like always. If you are here at the end and still watching, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Hobbo88. Twitch.tv forward slash Hobbo88 if you want to check out my live streams. And, of course, don't forget um, the Discord channel as well. The link for that is in the description below. But that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one.